Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome again to the new lecture of this course fundamentals and applications of dielectric ceramics. So, let us just briefly recap the last lecture. So, in the last lecture we introduced uh, tensor notation of properties. Uh, which is important from the perspective of properties in the crystals because the properties of materials are not isotropic. Most properties are isotropic in nature because uh, stress is a tensor, strain is a tensor and basically tensors are nothing but matrices of components more than 9. Okay? So, uh, so, scalar is a 0 rank, tensor is defined as uh, this uh, formula 3 to power n. So, for a tensor n is greater than or equal to 2 n is equal to 0 will mean scalar and n is equal to 1 will mean it is a vector and n is greater than equal to 2 will mean it is a tensor. So, a tensor will have 9 or more components uh, theoretically speaking and uh, as a result uh, your stress properties such as stress, strain, modulus they are all tensors. So, a stress and a strain are second rank tensors and modulus is a fourth rank tensor. Similarly, we looked at dielectric properties, Your, you have epsilon ij which or chi ij which is, so this is uh, epsilon ij is permittivity, chi ij is susceptibility, these are all both second rank tensors and when you look at polarization in electric field, these are all uh, vectors. So, these are second rank tensors and so, in general you will see that the proportionality constant, the property which is the proportionality constant whether it is susceptibility or dielectric constant or modulus or compliance, they will have a rank which is higher than the rank of the stimuli. So, if you saw in dielectric properties the stimuli is electric field, the value that you measure is polarization both are vectors and the proportionality constant is susceptibility which is a tensor. Okay. Similarly, so these are, so you can say that uh, rank 1 tensors are uh, polarization electric field and accordingly the rank 2 tensor will be the proportionality constant. When you looked at the stress strain, stress and strain are rank 2 tensors and correspondingly the uh, proportionality constant which is uh, elastic compliance or stiff net it becomes a fourth rank tensor. So, fourth rank tensor, tensor can be very tricky because you have 81 components, but life is little easy for us because of thermodynamics and uh, crystal symmetry arguments that we can reduce this number from 81 to 21 or even lower. So, that way we are lucky. So, we then just started our discussion on piezoelectric properties. So, we did not, uh, we were not able to get into equations, but we just defined what a piezoelectric is. So, we will continue on those aspects uh, based on crystal symmetry first before we look at the piezoelectric properties in mathematical form. So, from if you recall, uh, uh, if you if you look at the lecture notes in uh, of MOOC in structure of materials, you will recall that there are, there are something called as crystal classes, and these crystal classes are defined on the basis of 32 point groups. Okay, so point groups basically you can say they are sort of addressed to the structure of material in some sense. Okay, so point groups are related to space groups and so on and so forth. The space group consider the motif into consideration. So, as a result these 32 point groups become some 230 something space groups. We are not going to go into crystallography, but basically you can say 32 point groups are 32 representations of points in a space using considering that uh, the distribution of points in the space is space filling and uh, symmetric. And so, out of these 32 point groups, Uh, when you apply symmetry arguments, there are 21 which are 
you can say non centro symmetric and remaining 11 are centro symmetric. And what we saw in the last class is this centro symmetric or non centro symmetric centro symmetric will mean having a center of symmetry which means you can replicate if you have a center of symmetry you can replicate a point at x y z 2 minus x minus y minus z. Okay. If you do not have center symmetry then you would not be able to do this transformation. So, basically the environment at x y z will not be similar to environment at minus x minus y minus z which means you cannot perform that symmetry operations. So, 32 point groups are based on distribution of points in space based on symmetry arguments and so on and so forth which you can look at in the uh, details related to crystal structure uh, MOOC course uh, structure of materials MOOC course. Uh, so, the piezoelectric materials belong to those materials which are non centro symmetric. So, what are these? So, let us just define the crystal classes with respect to. So, let us say we have uh, several crystal classes, crystal system, let us say, then we have centro symmetric groups, and we have non centro. symmetric point groups let us say PGs. Okay. So, here we write first as cubic, then we have tetragonal, then we have ortho, rhombic, then we have hexagonal and we have trigonal which is rhombohedral and then we have monoclinic and we have triclinic. Among these, see among these let us say we have these point groups cubic, tetragonal, orthorum, okay. So, among these we have M 3 M 3 M these are non centro symmetric these are centro symmetric then we can say 4 this is also represented as M 4 or M M M then we have M M M in orthorhombic in hexagonal we have 6 or M as well as 6 or M M M or then trigonal we have 3 bar and 3 bar m. We have 2 or m and then here we have 1 bar. So, if we count the total number we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have 11 centro symmetric point groups. In the non centro symmetric point groups we have cubic. So, we have 4, 3, 2, bar 3 m 2 3 then we have 4 4 m m bar 4 bar 4 2 m and 2 2. In the orthorhombic we have m m 2 and 2 2 2. In the hexagonal we have 6 comma 6 m m and here we have bar 6 bar 6 m 2 and 6 2 2 and then we have 3 3 m and 3 2 2 m and none and 1 and none i will tell you why have you drawn the why, why will we will come to a minute to to the reason why we have drawn them in two columns in a minute so these are all you can see non centro symmetric point groups so, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. So, we have 21 total. Okay. I have divide put them in two columns because in the non centro symmetric there is a further division that some of these are polar and some of these are non polars. So, ones on the left are 
polar polar means they have the crystal will have a dipole moment a permanent dipole moment and non polar are the ones that even though they are non centrosymmetric they are not polar the crystal does not have a the dipole moments basically you can say cancel out each other when you put on when you put in ions on them so you can see that in the cubic crystal there is no polar group but in the cubic but you have non polar group in cubic crystal so you have non centrosymmetric non polar groups but you don't have any polar non centrosymmetric so you can see that polar is a subgroup of non centrosymmetric if it is centrosymmetric it can never be polar so for something to be polar it has to be non centrosymmetric but that is not a sufficient condition it can be polar there is a possibility for it to be a polar if it only if it is non centrosymmetric but it is not guaranteed that a crystal will be polar non polar if it is non centrosymmetric alone as you can see that some of the non centrosymmetric crystals are cubic crystals are non polar but they are not polar nothing is polar similarly you can see in tetragonal while 4 and 4 mm are polar bar 4 bar 2 bar 4 2 mm and 2 2 are non polar even though they are non centrosymmetric and similarly we have these many other crystal systems so out of these we have 10 which are polar and 11 which are non polar so so out of these so as far as piezo electricity is concerned as far as piezo electricity is concerned the requirement is that crystal must be non centro so even though the material is cubic as long as it is non centro symmetric it will have piezo electricity okay so the only requirement is crystal must be non centro symmetric so it applies to all the 21 point groups except 432 so with the exception of 432 everything else is piezoelectric so which means out of 21 20 are piezoelectric so as long as your material belongs to these 20 point groups it will be a piezoelectric material so this is a must requirement a piezoelectric material must be non centrosymmetric it can be polar it can be non polar it doesn't matter so so basically piezoelectric properties is coupling of mechanical properties to electrical properties and as we will see uh, there are direct and indirect piezoelectric effect there are two effects that we can see we'll see them later on so a piezoelectric material is something which couples mechanical properties to electrical properties upon application of a mechanical stimuli it show mechanical response uh, electrical response or upon application of electrical stimuli it shows a mechanical response but the main the fundamental requirement for the material is that it must be non centro symmetric that is it must lack non non uh, center of symmetry build upon this further we get to what we call as pyroelectric crystals pyroelectric crystal must be non centro symmetric must then it also it must also be polar so except 432 okay except 432 so 432 is in non polar anyway so there are 11 the 10 point groups basically so we can remove actually this 432 because it's anyway not piezoelectric so it can't be pyroelectric as well so first requirement is it must be non centro symmetric and then second requirement is it must be polar so there are 10 point groups on the left that we drew all of these these are all non centro symmetric and polar these materials are all pyroelectric so pyroelectric material what is a pyroelectric material which couples temperature with electrical response 
So, a pyroelectric material is something by definition which is non centrosymmetric and which must be polar that is which must have a polar axis a unique basically it means that you it must have a unique polar axis which means it must have dipole moment along that axis. Okay. So, that is what a pyroelectric material means. Then we come to third class of material which is called as ferroelectric materials. For a ferroelectric material the requirement is it must be non centrosymmetric, it must be polar which means it must have a unique polar axis. Third requirement is the polarization along the polar axis is reversible by reversing the the electric field. So, for a so let me just depict this. So, for a pyroelectric, this is a pyroelectric, okay. And here we draw a ferroelectric. So, for a pyroelectric, let us say this is the polarization vector, okay. So, when you apply electric field in this direction, this remains in this direction but when you apply electric field in this direction the p remains the same it does not affect it okay so when you change the electric field direction the polarization direction doesn't change in the ferroelectric crystal when you apply electric field in this direction your polarization is in this direction and when you reverse the direction of electric field the polarization also reverses it has to happen the polarization is reversible by reversing the direction of electric field. This is what makes a ferro makes it a ferroelectric. Also ferroelectrics are materials which have a transition. So, the ferroelectric material will disappear above a certain temperature called as Curie temperature. So, they have a ferroelectric transition which is typically a phase transition as we will see in the thermodynamic. at a temperature called as T c. Okay. So, if you now look at it there is a all centrosymmetric materials are piezoelectric right which means all centro symmetric materials right sorry non centrosymmetric materials except 432. So, all non centro my, my apologies that all non centrosymmetric materials are piezoelectric except 432. Within these non centrosymmetric materials, you have 11 of them which are. So, this is basically you, you can say 20 pgs, right. Within these, you have uh, 10 pgs which are non polar, uh, sorry, polar. These are all. pyroelectric. Within these we have another class which is ferroelectric for which polarization is reversible. This number is not very well defined. So, we cannot say what this number is, but basically what we can say is that every ferroelectric material is pyroelectric and piezoelectric in by default. Every pyroelectric is a piezoelectric by default, but not necessarily a ferroelectric. Okay, and pyroelectric material may be pyroelectric, a piezoelectric material may be pyroelectric or may be ferroelectric, but not necessarily. So this is sort of a diagram, Venn diagram kind of. You see that piezo piezoelectric is a broader class of materials. Pyroelectric is a little restricted class of materials from 20 to 10 point groups, and ferroelectric is even more restricted class of materials. So, this is a basic uh, you can say classification of uh, uh, piezo, pyro and ferroelectric 
materials. So, let us get back to the properties of uh, uh, piezoelectric crystals now. So, we were talking about the piezoelectric effect. So, this introduction that I have given you this was necessary just to differentiate between the piezo pyro and ferro we will come to that in a little bit more detail later on. So, piezoelectric materials are basically materials which are polarized not only by application of stress. but also by stress okay so there is a linear relationship if, so the, there are two kinds of effect first is called as direct lean, direct piezoelectric effect and this direct piezoelectric effect is that di which is the charge density this is related to stress x j k and the proportionality constant is small d i j k. Okay. So, you can see that d is the basically as we saw dielectric displacement the charge density right. So, this is charge density which is nothing but polarization right charge density d i this is equal this is proportional to x j k which is the stress tensor and the proportionality constant is piezoelectric coefficient which is direct piezoelectric coefficient. Okay. So, this is uh, basically you can say this is coulomb per meter square this is Newton per meter square and this will be coulomb per meter square divided by so this will be coulomb per newton generally the values are noted in terms of pico coulomb per newton but basic unit is coulomb per newton in the si units okay so this is the piezoelectric coefficient which is the direct piezoelectric coefficient so you can say this is direct piezoelectric coefficient d i j k which is a third rank tensor okay d i j k because it couples uh, stimuli of rank 2 with the uh, measurement uh, quantity of rank 1 okay so now they also have another property which is called as in indirect piezoelectric effect or converse piezoelectric effect So, converse piezoelectric effect is that change you you have a change in dimension when under an under the influence of a of an external field. Okay. So, when you apply electric field then they show change in the dimension or the strain. So, this converse piezoelectric is basically strain is related to electric field. So, this is described as x i j small x i j that is equal to d k i j into e k or you can say this is also written as uh, d prime i j k into e k and sorry not prime, but I can say I can write a transpose. Okay. So, T this is a transpose of matrix and this is basically called as converse or indirect piezoelectric coefficient. Okay. 
So, again you can see the units this is unit less and this is volt per centimeter or volt per meter. So, this would be picometer per volt. So, you can see the direct piezoelectric coefficient will have a unit of pico coulomb per newton and in this case the units will be picometer per volt. Basically for a volt of voltage what is the displacement that you measure in picometers? It is a very small displacement that is why it is typically in picometer, but you can say it is in meter per volt. Okay. So, it is very small that is why we generally write it in terms of picometer or nanometers things like that. So, these are two piezoelectric coefficients that we have one is a direct piezoelectric coefficient d i j k and second is the indirect piezoelectric coefficient which is d k i j which is transpose matrix d i j k t. So, per script t. Okay. The units are uh, picometer meter per volt for indirect one and coulomb per newton for the direct piezoelectric coefficient. Okay. So, there is also th something about the sign. The sign of these will depend upon whether you have uh, direct sign will be determined by uh, you can say determined by what will it be determined by the sign of stimuli right. So, what is the sign of applied? So, you can say stimuli that is stress or or electric field. So, you may have compressive strain, you may have tensile strain similarly you can have charge density which is so polarity of electric polarity will change as you change the direction of stress also whether compressive or tensile stress that, that is applied. So, now essentially uh, in this case if since the stress and strain are are symmetrical tensors as we saw earlier this also makes that uh, uh, the, the piezoelectric tensors are also symmetrical with respect to uh, similar indices. So, for example, d i j k will mean that it will become d i k j. So, this is a uh, symmetry argument which is applied to. So, you can do again this when you write the matrix of this uh, d i j k and when you make this those uh, similarity with respect to what you did in the stress tensor and strain tensor you can work out this d i j k will be similar to d i k j. So, this is what we have done today and uh, so number of piezoelectric coefficient you can see when you do that. So, for a rank 3 tensor you will have 27 right. So, 27 reduces to 18 when you apply this argument that stress and strain tensors are symmetric and these can further be reduced to even lower components when you apply thermodynamic and crystal symmetry arguments. So, they are lowered in in general uh, the number is much lower. What are the examples of these materials? Examples are silicon oxide, zinc oxide, PVDF which is polyvinylidene fluoride, uh, lead zirconate titanate PBZR Ti O3 and so on and so forth. These are all very good piezoelectric materials. Of course, among these, these are ferroelectric materials. So, they are necessarily piezoelectric and these are only piezoelectric. So, for example, the quartz watches that we wear, they are based on piezoelectric effect and in those materials silicon oxide is quartz is the one which is used for piezoelectric as a piezoelectric component. So, we will stop here today, we are running out of time. So, what we have done is we have basically discussed what is the thermo, what is the crystal basis for piezo, pyro and ferroelectric materials and then we have looked into the tensor notations of piezoelectric uh, properties. We will further dwell upon in the next few lectures. Thank you.